Hello everyone, I want to walk you through how to make this block today. This is um, something that I learned how to do in the quilting ministry that I'm part of. And we just call it a 2x4 block. I don't know if it has a natural name. It finishes roughly at 12 and a half inches by 12 inches, which is a little bit odd because it's supposed to be a square. But um, the only thing I can think of is seam allowances in there somewhere. So, the first step that you're going to do is you're going to need two and a half inch by length of fabric, or length of width of fabric, two and a half inch by however many inches long it is, 42 or 44, depending on, on your, um, on the fabric. You can either use a jelly roll for this or you can cut fabric. I do both. I use a jelly roll for the print and then for the background, I cut fabric. So that way I do. I wanted a little bit of texture and to get a black tone on tone, um, jelly roll was just a little bit too out of the, the price range for me. So this is what I ended up with. You're going to take them and sew them length side all the way down and going to do that with all of the blocks in your um with all of the strips that you have i think with the fabric that i had i only had enough to do 20 strips so i didn't use an entire jelly roll so it's 20 blocks of the white and 20 blocks of the black for me um so then what i do is once that's all sewn I stack them up three at a time and then I cut off the selvages because the selvages need to cut off need to be cut off and then you're going to cut these into 13 and a half inch segments I'm just lining it up on a 13 and a half inch segment and just cut and it'll get you three segments per um, joined unit. And usually you have some left at the end. And what I do is I cut those down into two and a half inch blocks. Um, it's already two and a half one way and then we're gonna cut it down into two and a half the other way. So that way this becomes, for a two and a half inch quilt, you've already got some of these ready to go um, to start being put together with other ones. So, I'm gonna go ahead and separate these out real quick. And I separate them out so that way I can chain piece them over at the sewing machine. Didn't get all the selvage off of that one, but that's okay. Okay. So now I just put them in my stack, or stack them back up, and put them in my stack of ones that I need to do. And let's go ahead and do a little bit of chain piecing. Well, let me let me do this because I've only got one more stack of three to to do to cut. So let me cut this real quick and then then we can go to the sewing machine. I'm just lining them up as best as I can, getting them straight in a row. Okay. 
paint, grab my paint roller to take out my salvage. And close y'all's rotary blades. I know I don't, but do as I say, not as I do. Don't cut your fingers off. It's very dangerous leaving a rotary blade open. Okay. You want to make sure that when you're cutting the 13 half inch, that the one is over here, um, that you're measuring it correctly. Mine was upside down a second ago. So this is going to be probably a 36 by 36 inch, 36 by 36, 6 by 6 block um, quilt, which will give me the 36 blocks that I have. Since I actually am going to end up with 40 blocks, um, 40, I don't want it to be like 8 by 5 or anything like that. So, 6 by 6 was the next nearest one. Okay, and I do lose that two and a half. Okay, now that we're done cutting, let me definitely close that. Okay, again, take the pile, separate it into sacks. So, that way everything goes where it's supposed to. Okay, so now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a stack of white, a stack of black on, and alternate it. So that um, when you're chain piecing for me, it's easier to chain piece that way. And I'm not going to chain piece all of these. I'm just going to chain piece a couple to show you what they look like. Um, this is, I would say, a beginner-friendly block. If you have been around quilting for a while, this is probably something that you can whip up really quick. Um, even a beginner quilt quilter I think can probably whip this up really quick. Okay. I think I might have more black than I do white for this stack. I'm all about assembling mine. So um, that's why I want to just go ahead and get these done real quick. I guess I don't have more black than I do white. Hopefully you can hear me. Okay, I'm kind of mumbling to myself. But okay, and then there's that one. And there's that one. Alrighty, so let's go ahead and go to the sewing machine and chain piece some of these up. Okay, so now that we're at the sewing machine, we're going to start to chain piece these up. Um, I have some from earlier that I started to do, but I'll leave those there for right now so that way I don't mess up my, well, let me see. Yeah, I'll leave that stack there for right now. 
Okay, so what you're going to do is you're going to take one of your pieces, take... So you have three pieces. You're going to take one for the bottom. You're going to make the second one the top. And what you're going to do is you're going to do um, color side or print side to background piece. So that way when you open it up, it's alternating. And the third piece is put off to the side for right now. You don't need it at the moment. And then now the same with the black, take the extra piece over here, take these two, put the pattern piece next to the, sew the pattern piece onto the background piece. I am using a cream color for the top and for the bottom I'm actually trying to get rid of an orange bobbin so I'm not being overly like bobbin has to match and all of that. You probably should but I'm not. Okay, so say that you have a whole bunch done. Um, and you're ready to start putting on the, the third piece that we had over here. Go ahead and cut this apart. If you can chain piece with it all on then more power to you I can't do that okay so then this stack is like this when you're done you're just going to flip it over to get back to the first one and then you'll see the first one matches up and these will need to be pressed um really really good once you're done with them. Um... So there's nothing to it. It's just chain piecing them along. If I can figure out how to time lapse this piece, I will. I think I've got two more to go.
you can use pins if you would like to use pins. I'm not a fan of pins when it comes to regular uh, piecing. Um, I am seeing the advantages of them in foundation paper piecing and FPP, but I haven't, for me, piecing, I just go with it and I hold the fabric. Okay, last one for demonstration purposes. Once you have those done, you open it up and it's going to look like this, where it's alternating. Every other one is either a um, background piece or a printed piece. Let me just get the other ones off of here. Like I said, these need to be pressed, so I'm going to put them off to the side. And then we're going to go back over to the cutting mat. Um, I'm not going to press these right now because I don't want to wait for my iron to heat up. Okay, we'll be right back. Okay, so after you've pressed everything nice and flat, again, it's going to look like this. You want to take it and now cut it into four and a half inch segments. Let me go ahead and grab my ruler. Trying to line it up. Um, this does not have any room for forgiveness. So you want to be pretty sure, double check, triple check that you're on the four and a half inch line. You're not going to have that two and a half inch segment at the end that you can fudge your way into the, um, the cuts with. You can check the last piece to see if it cut at the four and a half inch. Um, to make sure that it's four and a half inches, I don't. I just it's going to be what it's going to be, so. We had a couple others cut from earlier. And the white one. I think I might have gotten a nick in my blade. Uh, I wasn't pressing hard enough. Don't know which. Kind of moving the fabric around a little bit. Oh, come on. This one actually looks like it could have been pressed a little bit better. Oh well. I gotta press it in a little bit. I'll just have to be mindful. 
and that. Okay, so I don't even know how many sets that is. I'm cutting also from the edge that we kind of lined everything up on um, to get as clear of a cut as I can. So anything that's misshapen or lengthwise was off, like this was a little bit off. I don't know if you can see that in the camera. Um, it's going to be on this side of the block. And I will try to, if I remember, get those into the middle of the block. Okay. And two more. I do not double up on these or triple up on these to cut them. I cut them single. Um, the reason for that is I don't want to accidentally not have one lined up. Flip this one around. Um, I have to watch a video on how to change the blade in my Mortelli uh, rotary cutter. It's been, it's been a little bit. I don't remember how to change it. And there's a spring in there that like, if it pops off, you can't get back into place. So it terrifies me every time I change the uh, blade. Okay. Now we're going to go back to the sewing machine. So let me go ahead and move you. Really quick before we go to the sewing machine, one thing that I wanted to point out is that so your, your blocks were essentially like this. And then we cut them in four and a half segments. What we are doing is we're going to take this center block, turn it over, and that will make, then sew those together, and that will make the, um, the pattern, the two by four pattern. Okay, so now that I've explained that, let's go over to the sewing machine. Okay, so it's going to be very much the same. You're going to have your piles here and it's going to be in stacks of three. And you're going to chain piece it. The only thing different is that you're going to take this one and you're always going to do a print to a background. Um, so that will kind of also help you. Unless if you're doing all prints, then just make sure that you get the right print where it needs to go. super picky about how the seams lie and all of that. Um, if you are, you can make sure to, to do that. But like I said, I'm not super picky about them locking or um, anything like that. I do want them to kind of nestle so that way I can see that the points are going to line up, but I don't want them to be, I don't care which way the seam is laying.
hopefully this camera angle is okay. You can see. Okay. I do want them to kind of lay flat as much as possible. Um, this one was the one that could have been pressed a little bit more. So I'm going to kind of pull on the fabric as it's going through to get it to line up the way that I need it to, or to flatten out the way that I need it to. If you have an easy quilt pattern, that would be good for quilt ministry that is fast to whip up. I would love to know what it is and how to do it, if it's a pattern that you can share. Um, I know some patterns you have to buy and all of that, but if it's a pattern you can share, that would be really cool. Just um, leave it down in the comments section below. Okay, so I think you all have the idea of how to chain piece these. I am going to go ahead and chain piece this last one. And then cut this, flip this over again. Go ahead and unchain these. And we're going to open them up. They do need to be pressed, but pressing the seam isn't going to impact or affect the seam. So I'm going to go ahead and do them, press them all at once versus pressing them and then sewing them and then pressing them again. That's just the way I do it. I do not do what I'm doing. My Everything is ready to go. Just me tapping my thing and my finger was right there. Normally I never do that. Just be careful. Come out. Yeah. Okay. That's why I thought that it had come out, but I couldn't tell. Hopefully I can get this. Okay. I'm not normally able to get on the first try. And you're just going to go through the pile and chain piece them all together now. Oh, 
Okay. So I'm going to stop there. I still have a bunch more that can be done. But I want to show you now what it looks like. So there's that one. There's this one. Um, back over here. Let me pause you. Okay, over here I have these two done. Pretty floral, nice geometric pattern. And so what I'm thinking, get that out of the way, is I'm thinking I'm going to have too much trash. <laughs> I think I'm going to do like one here, one, so a white background, black background, and over here, a white background. And a black background like this and then alternating making sure that no background spaces are touching that everything is alternating um, so yeah it's going to be a pretty decent sized quilt once it's done um, I don't know how long it's going to take me to finish so um, I'm going to keep working at it and hopefully it won't take me too long because there's other projects I want to get started on but um but yeah that's what i am currently working on i hope you enjoyed this video if you have any suggestions or tips that you think would make this process uh faster please leave them down in the comments below so that way i can read them and anything that will help me be more proficient and faster i am all for <laughs> okay thanks for watching everyone and i'll talk to you later bye